Okay, so we're starting chapter five, section three, and we're talking about the mole and how we count atoms and how we count atoms inside of compounds and how we count individual components of a compound themselves. And so when we use chemistry terms, we use a unit called the mole. And I want you to kind of think about the mole like a dozen, right? We know that one dozen of anything, so one dozen, oh, if I can write, one dozen, right, is equal to 12 things. Doesn't matter what those things are. We usually say eggs, right? Um, the number of eggs in one dozen is 12. The number of bagels in a dozen is 12. Doesn't matter what you have a dozen of, you have 12 of them, right? Okay, so the same thing is true about a mole. I'm going to try and hide my controls so I can see the whole screen. All right, that's much better. Okay, so when we talk about a mole, one mole is equal to six, ooh, I could write things that I say, 602 hexillion things, right? Anybody familiar with that, that term? It's huge. It's huge. So that's like saying one mole is equal to 602 hextillion. So I need uh, 21 zeros behind it. So that's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 21. That's right. That's what I need. 21. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a huge one mole of something is enormous, right? I, I, I want you to think about that. And um, a lot of times people will confuse a mole with a molecule. It's not the same thing. A mole is different than a molecule. One molecule is one thing, but a mole is 602 hexillion things. So it's a huge difference. So don't, don't make this mistake. Don't say that a mole is equal to a molecule. Be very, very careful about that. Um, and so when, when we talk about um, chemistry, right, there are a lot of times where we want to count the number of atoms in something, right? But atoms are so small and they're really, really, really hard to count. And so we do it in a particular way. We use, um, way in order to count it. So let's think about this. Let's, let's kind of switch gears a little bit and let's just say, okay, um, I had a bag here, a big bag of M&Ms, right? Yeah, I love M&Ms, right? I want to know how many M&Ms are in my bag. And I could open the bag and I could take one M&M out at a time and I could count one, two, but I'd be here for a really long time. And I don't really want to do that, right? Um, think smarter, not harder, right? So we're going to try and do this in a little bit easier way. So what if I took one M&M out of the bag? There's my one M&M. If I weighed that one M&M, I could get the mass of one M&M, right? So I'm going to tell you that I'll, I'm weighed an M&M and an M&M's mass is 0 0.800 grams. Now, it's not really good science if I only grab one M&M, right? So I'm going to want to do it a couple of times and get an average. So this is my average weight of one M&M. Right, my average weight of one M&M is 0 0.800 grams, right? Now, what I can do is I can weigh the entire bag. Weigh entire bag, right? Weight of entire bag. And so I'm gonna find out that that bag is 357 grams. How do I convert and figure out how many M&Ms are in that bag from the mass. Well, if I know I have 357 grams um, in a bag, right? Then all I have to do is take that mass and say, okay, I know that one M&M is equal to 0 0.800 grams, right? And so by dividing the total mass 
of the bag by the individual M&M, then I'm going to find out that one M&M, I'm, I'm sorry, I know that one M&M is 0 0.800 grams. I'm going to find out that I have 446 M&Ms, right? My grams cancel, so I'm no longer in grams. I'm now in units of M&Ms. So I have 446 M&Ms. It would have taken me a while to count out 446 M&Ms, but I was able to weigh just 10 of them and get an answer a whole lot quicker. Um, and so this would be really easy if all M&Ms were exactly the same mass, but a lot of times they're not. They're not perfect, right? Well, atoms are the same way. We've talked about atoms having isotopes. So if you have, let's say carbon, for example, remember we talked about carbon and you have carbon 12 and you have carbon 13 and you have carbon 14. Well, because they have different num numbers of neutrons, they have different masses. And so when you look at the periodic table, what you're gonna see um, is you have carbon, right? Six and it's 12 point, what does carbon say? 12.01 on your periodic table. That's the weighted average, and it's, um, it's weighted depending on how much of each isotope you have. Okay, so let's replace that, that word M&M &M with atoms, right? And we'll talk about carbon atoms, right? What if I had a bag of carbon atoms? And I wanted to know how many carbon atoms were in that bag. Well, I'm gonna tell you that the bag weighs 12 grams. Right, so I have a 12 gram bag of carbon. How am I gonna figure out how much, how, how many individual atoms I have inside of that 12 gram bag of carbon? And 12 grams really isn't a, isn't a lot at all. Um, one AAA battery weighs about 12 grams or two nickels, right? We're not talking about a whole lot here. 12 grams is, is very little amount. I know that one atom of carbon, and this is, you'll just have to take my word for this one, um, weighs two times 10 to the minus 23rd grams, right? So one atom is super tiny. So that's why it's one, two times 10 to the minus 23. And so if we take 12 divided by two times 10 to the minus 23, what we get is guess what? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. What does that look familiar to, right? Well, if I come back up here, oh, I wrote it on the previous slide here. If I use this and I say, okay, what is this? This one mole is 602 hextillion things. Looking at that number is, is too big. So what if I convert this to scientific notation? I'm gonna find my decimal and I'm gonna count one, two, three, oh, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that gives me 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things, right? Okay, where did that, that look familiar, right? 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and in this case, we're talking about carbon atoms. So we said, what is that? What is that number? That's a mole. So that's one mole of carbon atoms, right? Because 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything is one mole. That's what, that's the relationship we just learned about, right? So in 12 grams of carbon, just that teeny, teeny, tiny amount, we have a whole mole of carbon atoms. And that's where the 12 grams comes from, right? We know that we can say there are 12.01 grams, right? Is the same thing as one mole of carbon atoms, right? So that's a molar relationship. And you could write that either way. This is like a conversion factor. Moles of carbon atoms equal to 12.01 grams of carbon atoms, right? It's the same thing. So you could write either one on top or bottom, depends on how you need it to look, right? But I want you to come away from this thinking that a mole is a giant amount of things, giant. Like 
if we had a mole of M&Ms, you would almost fill the earth. That's a lot of M&Ms. Whereas if you have a mole of carbon atoms, that's like two nickels. <laughs> that's not a lot. So um, you have to realize that atoms are tiny. I mean, they are so, so, so tiny um, that you can have a mole of carbon atoms and it would only take up the weight of two nickels. So just keep in mind that atoms are really, really tiny and um, you need a lot of them to take up a lot of space, right? So um, when we talk about our different elements, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the periodic table um, and you're going to look at the different elements, right? So if I told you, um, what's the molar relationship between moles and grams for carbon? You would say one mole of carbon, right? Is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon. How did you do that? You looked on the periodic table and you found the average atomic mass of carbon. How about for nitrogen? One mole of nitrogen is equal to, and I just used the N, 14.01 grams of nitrogen, right? You do this for any element on the periodic table. One mole silicon, 28.09 grams of silicon. So not all atoms have the same mass, and that makes sense, right? Because nitrogen has one more proton, one more neutron. It's going to be heavier. So that makes sense that a mole of nitrogen is going to be slightly more than a mole of carbon. It's going to weigh a little bit more. Silicon. Silicon, we go, looking at carbon, we go from six protons and six neutrons to 14 protons and 14 neutrons. So silicon is going to weigh more, a little bit more than double, right? And that makes sense. Okay, so now let's go back to our regular notes, right? So one mole of any element has a molar mass in grams, and that's what we just said. And it's equivalent to the atomic mass. This is that number at the bottom. So you had carbon, six, it was 12.01. So that atomic mass there is this number right there at the bottom. So the molar mass tells us that the mass of one mole of any substance corresponds to the mass of a single atom in AMU, right? And we said the number of atoms present in one mole is 602 um, hex hexillion, right? And so that's a lot, and we don't wanna write it that way. So from now on, we're gonna write it as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So it's, it's easy to think about, right? So our conversion factor here is one mole of anything, doesn't matter, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element, doesn't matter. That's your conversion factor, okay? So there was a famous um, scientist who this number was named after, and his name is Avogadro, Amito Avogadro. So they call it Avogadro's number. And that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole, right? So it doesn't matter. They all, um, one mole of any atom is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So look here. Here's some examples your book are giving you, right? Um, we talked about carbon already here. We said one mole of carbon atoms has a mass of 12 grams. Sulfur, one mole of sulfur atoms has a mass of 32 grams. 0.07 grams, right? Sulfur is heavier. It's got more protons, more neutrons. Silver has even more. So one mole of silver, silver atoms, look at, look at its atomic number. It's going to have a whole lot more, right? One mole of silver atoms has a mass of 107.9. So every time we go up in number of protons, number of neutrons, our atomic mass goes up. And so does our... Um, molar mass. So that's why they call it molar mass, right? But what you can also say about these, right, is that if you have one mole of them, doesn't matter if we're silver, if we're carbon, if we're sulfur, each of these has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And in this case, it's silver. This is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. This is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms 
of sulfur, right? They have different masses, but they have the same number of atoms. That's, that's how you kind of have to think about it. Okay, let's see if I can make this small again. All right, so when you're looking at a problem, a lot of times what, what they're gonna ask you to do is to convert between atoms and moles. And so here's our conversion factor, and this is just another way to do dimensional analysis, right? And we're gonna convert between atoms and moles. So you wanna look and you wanna find out that first thing is that question. What are you asked? What unit needs to be on your final answer? That's your goal, right? That's our goal. Then what, what were we given in the question? And then how are we gonna set up that dimensional analysis? solve the problem, and then think about your answer. Does your answer really make sense, right? And so um, the other one that your book doesn't really say, but you will have to use, right? You know that one mole of your element, doesn't matter what element it is, we're just gonna call it element, um, is equal to whatever the molar mass is in grams of that element. Right, and this is the atomic mass on the periodic table. I'm just gonna reread that, PT, right? Carbon was six and 12.01. So that atomic mass on the periodic table is right there. So for carbon, you would say one mole of carbon over 12.01 grams of carbon. So that's the other conversion factor that you're gonna need in the problems we're gonna do in a second. All right, last one. A lot of times, atoms are not by themselves. They're in a compound. And so you have to find the, not only the, the mass of just an atom, but you have to find the mass of a particular compound. And we call that the formula weight. So if you look at any given compound, um, like for example, we'll talk about water right? Everybody kind of knows water, H2O. The mass of this compound is going to depend on the mass of hydrogen, and it's going to depend on the mass of oxygen. And so the molar mass of the compound is equal to the formula weight of all those atoms put together, right? And so, so how do we do this? How do we find a molar mass for water or formula weight? It's the same thing. You can call it either one. Right? If we're talking about water, if we go to the periodic table, here's hydrogen right here, and here's oxygen. Those are the two that we need. So what we're told is that we have two hydrogen atoms and we have one oxygen atom. So I'm going to say two times my mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008, plus one, because I only have one oxygen atom, 16.00. And so what this gives me is our mass per mole of that compound. So if I add these up together, what I should get is 18.016. And so what is that number? This number, 18.016, is really the grams of water in one mole of water. So we can't just look at one element on the periodic table. We have to look at all the elements that are in the compound and how many of each atom are in the compound, right? Um, and I think that that is it. And we're going to switch over and we're going to go and look at our um, problems. All right, here we are on our problems for chapter three, section five. So the first one, it says to compare the number of atoms and the number of grams present in one mole of silver and one mole of gold. So let's do the atoms first, right? Okay, so what is our goal? Is we wanna to get to the number of atoms. So I'm gonna circle this, I'm gonna say this is my goal, right? And what am I given? I have one mole of silver. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna say I have one mole of silver and the silver's abbreviation is AG. If I'm trying to go from moles to number of atoms, there's a conversion factor that you should know. We, I know I wanna put my moles of AG on the bottom. Do I have a conversion factor that converts straight from moles to atoms? And the answer is yes, I do. That's Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver 
are in one mole of silver, okay? So my moles of silver cancel and I'm left with atoms of silver and that's what I want. So that gives me 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. Okay, let's do the same thing for our, um, what are we doing? Gold. So my goal is the same, but this time, do a different color, I'm starting with one mole of gold. So I start with that one mole of AU, right? And oh my goodness, I'm gonna do the same conversion. I know I have one mole of gold and in that one mole of gold, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold, gold. Gold, not silver, gold, gold is AU. Okay, so I end up with 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of AU. So how do they compare? That's really the question, compare them. What are they? If we compare these two, they are the same. Why? Because in one mole of anything, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, now the next part says, let me draw a little line here, kind of separate. Uh, we want to have a new goal. So here's our new goal is the number of grams present. This is our new goal in one mole of silver and one mole of gold. So in order to do that, we're gonna need this little, this little thing over here. And I think I might wanna move it because I'm kind of running out of room. So I'm gonna take this I'm gonna scooch it all over, okay? And I'll take this and I'll move it up here just so that we can still see it. Oh, it wants to keep it on one page. Oh, of course. Okay, so we'll leave it right there. Okay, so I know I'm starting with the same thing. I'm starting with one mole of, let's start with silver, just like we did before. So now our goal is different. We wanna to go to number of grams. We have a conversion factor that will take us from moles to number of grams. And remember that that is based on what's on the periodic table, right? So we say X number of grams of our element is equal to one mole of that element. And where do we get these grams from? This is the atomic mass on the periodic table. So let's use uh, silver as our example. Here's silver right here. What's our atomic mass of silver? Our atomic mass of silver is 107.9. So I'm gonna go over here and I know I want my moles of silver on the bottom. So I know in one mole of silver, I had, I said 107.9 grams. So I really just have one and one, so my moles cancel. I'm left with 107.9 grams of silver. Let's do the same thing, but now in this case, we're asked about our other one, which was um, gold. So we're starting with one mole of gold. So I wanna do my same conversion. I know in one mole of gold, I have some number of grams of gold. I gotta quit writing gold as AG. Gold, Dr. B, is AU, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go to my periodic table, I'm gonna go find AU for gold. Where's AU? Right here, right underneath. I have 197 grams. So I'm gonna write 197 grams. I think it was 0, 0.0, right? 0, 0.0, wanna keep our significant figures. So what does that give me? 197.0 grams of gold. Are the two the same? No, and that makes sense, right? Because gold has more protons, more neutrons than silver. And so one mole of it, if we have the same number of atoms, if it has more of those protons and neutrons that, that have mass, then it's gonna be heavier. So um, I don't know if you've ever, I have this, uh, <laughs> this strange story to tell. Um, I used to work in the quality control department in um, a jewelry manufacturing plant when I was an undergrad in 
college. And um, they would take you on this little tour. And it was really cool because they had in the vault, they had bricks of gold. And gold is so dense. We're not used to handling something that's so dense, that has so many protons and neutrons in every single atom. We're not used to lifting things like that. And so they let you go and pick it up. And the first time you go to try to pick up a brick of gold, you put in not enough force to do it because you're not used to lifting it. So the first time you go to pick up this, this brick of gold, you, you're just like, oh, you can't pick it up, you know? And then you have to put some more force into it. And then you can, I mean, it's not, it's not that you're uncapable, it's that um, you're just not anticipating it being that heavy. And so it's a really cool experience, um, but it's very, very dense. Okay, uh, 3.39, all right, calculate the following. The number of sodium atoms in 0 0.250 moles of sodium. Okay, so this is kind of easy. It's not a whole lot of words to figure out, right? So my goal here, is to find the number of sodium atoms. So here's my goal unit. And what I start with is right here. So really pretty, pretty straightforward, right? So I'm starting out with 0 0.250 moles of sodium. And I wanna convert that into number of atoms. How do I do that? What's my conversion factor here? I know that I'm gonna put moles on the bottom. I wanna to get to atoms. Do I need to go here and say, okay, where's, um, where's sodium? Do I, do I need to do that? No. All I really need to do is to remember what, a, what the definition of a mole is. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of anything. And in this case, it's sodium. So when we do this math, what you should get is 1.51 times 10 to the 23rd, I'm running out of room, atoms of sodium, right? Not too bad. Okay, let's do B down here. Let's do B in a different color. It's kind of fun to do all these different colors, B. So the number of moles, oh, in this case, we're starting, this is, this is what we start with. And here we're trying to find the number of moles. This is our goal. So sometimes you have, to, you have to just read it and make sure you know what they're asking for and what you're given, right? So we're given 4.0 grams of PB is lead. That's what we're starting with. And we wanna to go to number of moles. Well, if we wanna to go to number of moles, what we're gonna to have to do, we want grams on the bottom and we want moles but we have to, where are we gonna go get those grams? We're gonna get those grams from the periodic table. So you have to go here and you have to go to lead and you have to say how many grams are in there? Well, I see my atomic mass down below. So that's 207.2 grams of lead in one mole of lead. And so our grams cancel and we're left with moles and that's our goal. So four divided by 207.2 is 0 0.019 moles of lead, okay? Next one, we're gonna do is C, come down here. I wanna know the number of atoms in 12.01 grams of silicon. So atoms is our goal. And we're starting with 12.0 grams of silicon. Okay, so now I'm gonna convert that. I want grams of silicon on the bottom. I want, hmm, I wanna to go to number of atoms. Can I go straight from grams to atoms? No, I don't have a conversion for that. But I do know that I can convert from grams to moles, right? So I can go look on the periodic table and I can say silicon here is 28.09 grams of silicon in one mole of silicon. Okay, well, I'm getting there. I got rid of grams, I'm in moles. Now I wanna go from moles to atoms. So I know in one mole, and my moles are on the bottom, so they cancel, of anything, right? I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silicon. And so if we do 12 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 28.09, we get 
2.57 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silicon. Okay, so just be careful reading your statements and knowing um, what was asked for and that kind of thing. Okay, so now we're moving on, right? We know that atoms don't come typically by themselves. So a lot of times we have to figure out um, information about compounds. In this case, we're taking, we want to know the molar mass. So this is our goal for the following compounds. It's the same goal for all these compounds. So we have calcium sulfate, CaSO4. So when you do this, CaSO4, you have to take into account each of the individual atoms inside of that formula. So for example, calcium, let's do that first. Calcium, I know I have one atom of calcium and that one atom is 40.08 grams and I don't typically put the unit until I'm done, right? So, so let's do it that way. Plus, uh, my sulfur, here's my sulfur. My sulfur is 32.07, and I only have one of those, so 32.07. And then I have oxygen, but oxygen, I have four of them, so I have to be careful about that. And I need to go find my oxygen, which is 16.00, okay? So, Multiply and add that up. This is 40.08. This is 32.07. This is 64. Add those up, and what you should get is 136.15 grams per mole. So you have to you have to realize that when you go to the periodic table and you get all that stuff, all that all those atomic masses, and you put them together for that compound that the units are going to be grams per mole. You, you have to know that. So don't just add up the numbers and don't put a unit. Be very, very careful that you are taking care of, um, of identifying the unit on that. All right, let's try another one. Let's do this, C6H12O6. Okay, so I have six carbons. So C, this is C6H12O6. So I have six carbons. So six times carbon here is 12.01 plus hydrogen 1.008. Oh, wait, let's, how many do we have? Let's see if I can move that over. So I want to do 12 times 1.008. Ooh, this is not good. I'm running out of room already. Let's scoot that over. Okay plus six times oxygen, and we used oxygen before, is 16.00. So when you add all that together, what you should get is 116.16 grams per mole, okay? So this is B, right? So let's do our last one, let's do C. C, hydrogen peroxide. Sometimes you're gonna see hydrogen peroxide as H-O-O-H or it's H2O2. Either way, it's the same thing. So however you want to do it is fine. Um, so we have two hydrogens and hydrogen we set up here was 1.008 plus we have two oxygens and our oxygens right here is 16.00. Okay. So we add those up and you should get 34.02 and be careful of your units, grams per mole. And I actually kind of like to write my formula behind it. So it's 34.02 grams per mole of hydrogen peroxide, right? Same thing, we could do that for our, our here, our glucose, our glucose, which is C6H12O6, because sometimes you'll have another step later and you wanna make sure that you know which compound you were talking about, CaSO4. Okay, it's, just, it's kind of just a good idea. Okay, I think we have a few more conversions, good. Okay, now we'll get a little bit more complicated. Determine the number of molecules in a 325 milligram dose of aspirin. And they give us our molecular formula for aspirin. So what do we start with? Our 325 milligrams of aspirin. And we want to get to our goal, which is our number of molecules. This is our goal, 
right? And remember when we said um, Avogadro's number was 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and we had kind of been saying atoms, but really it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Things could be anything. And so whenever you hear molecules, number of molecules, I want you to think, oh, I'm gonna have to use Avogadro's number. Okay, so let's start with what we know. 325 milligrams, and I'm gonna put C9H8O4. Okay, so now I'm in milligrams. Nothing is given in milligrams, right? So I need to get out of milligrams and I need to get into grams. So I know I have a thousand milligrams in one gram. Okay, so that'll cancel my milligrams. Now, I know that I have grams on the top, I have grams of this compound. So I'm gonna put that grams of C9H8O4. In order to get to molecules, I'm going to have to convert to moles. Moles is like our, our in-between unit for everything. I call it, let's go to mole town. Um, because you just go there all the time because you can, once you get to moles, you can convert to grams, you can convert to molecules, you, you can convert to anything you want with moles. Moles is super cool. So I know I'm going to go to moles of C9H8O4. So how do I know how many grams of aspirin are in one mole of aspirin? Well, I have to go and I have to add it up, right? Because I have different atoms. So I have carbon nine. If I go to carbon, I can go get my molar mass, 12.01. Now I need to do my hydrogen. Hydrogen is 1.008. Then I have four oxygen and oxygen is 16.00. If I add all that up, then you're gonna plug that in right here. Whoa, you should get 180.154 grams per mole, okay? Now, I'm not done because I'm only, I'm only in moles and my goal here is to get to molecules. So I gotta convert again, all right? So how am I gonna convert from moles of C9H8O4 into molecules? Well, that's Avogadro's number, right? Six, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things could be anything, could be atoms in a mole, could be molecules in a mole, right? Doesn't matter. So molecules, C6H8O4, Whew. C, no, C9, C9, why did I want to say six? Nine, okay. Now in one mole of that same aspirin compound. So what you should get, and I'll kind of, the answer is going to go up here, you should have gotten 1.09 times 10 to the 21 molecules of C9H8O4. Okay, Ooh, and my picture's kind of over it, but 1.09 times 10 to the 21. So do you have a lot of molecules in only 325 milligram dose? Yes, you do, because molecules are so, 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 so small, right? Okay, and that's it for this section. See if I can stop the recording.